Welcome to Kingdom Prevailers International Christian Center, a place ordained by God for the lifting and fulfillment of God's Word for your life. Stay tuned as God's Word is brought to you by His anointed servant, Pastor Chris Abraham. Be blessed. From the depth of our hearts, for the privilege of seeing the first day in the sixth month of the year, let's give God thanks and praise. We are counted among the living and not among the dead. Let's appreciate God from the depth of our hearts. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we give you praise. We worship and exalt your most holy name. We glorify you, we honor you and adore you. To you be all the glory, to you be all the praise in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our God and our Father. In Jesus' precious name. Happy New Month, everybody. Praise God. You see, many started this year with us, but they are nowhere to be found right now. We are alive not because we are better than them. We are simply kept by the mercies of God. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Sir, God's mercy is the reason why the devil has not succeeded in messing us up. Are you hearing me, sir? God's mercy is the reason why the devil has not succeeded in messing us up. <laughs> His mercy is upon you and I, sir. And that is why we are still standing. Lord, for the privilege of being alive to see the first day in the sixth month of the year, I give you thanks from my heart. Lift up your voice and appreciate God. A thanksgiver can never be stranded. Those who know how to appreciate God can never depreciate in life. Father, from the depth of my heart, I give you thanks. I give you glory and praise. I worship and exalt your most holy name. Only the living can praise God. Lord, I thank you for the privilege of being among the living. Let everything that has bread praise the Lord. Thank you for the bread of life you have given me. I celebrate you, I appreciate you, I glorify you, I honor you and adore you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name. This afternoon, we are gathered in your presence to give you thanks and praise for keeping us alive to see the first day in the sixth month of the year, 2023. We do not take it for granted. We take it with gratitude. We appreciate you from the depth of our hearts for the multitude of your mercy, for your goodness and your kindness. Lord, take all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Let everyone that will be part of this three days media fast come out of it with a testimony. Let everyone that will be part of this three days media fast come out of it transformed in every department of life. And let your name be glorified in Jesus' precious name. Celebrate Jesus with another clap offering of praise. Please be seated in God's presence. Prevail us. And I have power with God. Congratulations. I take my text for this exaltation that is captioned. Maximizing the blessings of the media season maximizing the blessings of the media season. And I take my text from the book of Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 2 to verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 2 to verse 4. <laughs> the word says, O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Verse 3 says, God came from Teman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens. And the earth was full of his praise. 
verse 4 says, And his brightness was as the light, and he had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. The midst of the year season is a special season of the year. Please get this. The midst of the year season is a special season of the year. It comprises of the sixth and the seventh month of the year. That is the month of June and July. With the sixth month on the first half of the year and the seventh month on the second half of the year. That is why the midst of the year season is a special season of the year. It is a time that signifies the dividing of the year into two. It divides the first half of the year from the second half of the year. So the midst of the year season is a season that divides the year into two. It divides the first half of the year from the second half of the year. And the midst of the year season is a season that comes with some certain divine events. Please get this. The midst of the year season is a season that comes with certain divine events. It is a season that is characterized by certain divine events for the benefit of God's people. The divine events that comes with the midst of the year season are ordained for the benefit of the saints. And I want us to look at some of these divine events that characterize the midst of the year season. In that same Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2, the Bible says, I have heard thy speech and was afraid, O Lord. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. So the midst of the year season is usually a time that God revives his work in the life and midst of his people. Please get this. The midst of the year season is usually the time of the year that God revives his work in the life and midst of his people. In other words, the midst of the year season is a time of the manifestation of the work of God in the favor of the people of God. <laughs> we are in the season of the manifestation of the works of God in the favor of the people of God. In this midst of the year season, sir, my God will walk in you, walk through you, and work for you to the wonder and amazement of everyone around you. Hmm. Please get this, sir. In the midst of the year, revive thy works. So it is a time of the manifestation of the works of God in the lives of his people and in the midst of his people. Therefore, in the midst of the year for 2023, God will walk in you, walk through you, and work for you to the amazement of everyone around you. In Psalms 90 verse 16, hear what the word says. Psalms 90 and verse 16. He said, Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. Let thy work Appear unto thy servant. And the midst of the year is that season of the year. Where the work of God is made manifest. In the lives and midst of his people. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Therefore before the end of this midst of the year. My God will work wonders in your life. He will walk in you. Walk through you and walk for you to the amazement of everyone around you. And two scriptures validate this truth. Number one, Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5. Number two, Isaiah 29 verse 14. 
Let's read Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5. The word says, Behold you among the hidden unbelievers, hidden, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will walk a walk in your days which you will not believe, though it be told you. Uh, so God will do something in your life that will be unbelievable to unbelievers. Get what I'm saying, sir? I say in this midst of the year, God will walk in your life. He will do something in your life that will be unbelievable to unbelievers. It will not be unbelievable to believers because believers are ordained to see the <laughs> manifestations of the acts of God. This sign shall follow them that believe. So it will not be unbelievable to believers, but it will be unbelievable to unbelievers. That's why I say, be holy among the hidden. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Isaiah 29, verse 14. Isaiah 29, verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people. That's why I said the midst of the year season is, is a season where the works of God are made manifest in and in the, midst, in the life of his people and in the midst of his people. In the life of his people and in the midst of his people. So Isaiah 29, 14 says, Behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people. Even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of the prudent shall be healed. Amen. So expect God to do something in your life this midst of the year that will marvel everyone around you. Psalms 118 verse 23. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. <laughs> Everyone around you shall see the marvelous works of God in your life this season. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. They will wonder at what God is doing in your life in this midst of the year. These two months, sir, watch out. June and July. My God will do something in your life that will be amazing in the eyes of everyone around you. Something that will be pleasantly surprising. Something that will be what, sir? Pleasantly surprising to everyone around you, including you. <laughs> Even you yourself will be pleasantly surprised at what God will do in your life in this midst of the year. Something pleasantly surprising to everyone around you, including you, sir. You will not end this midst of the year season without a testimony. It is impossible, except if you don't do this three days fast. In Mark chapter 5 from verse 19 to verse 20, Mark chapter 5, verses 19 and 20, the word says, How bad Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee. So this midst of the year, you will share your testimonies to your friends to your loved ones, to your neighbors and family members. Get it? You will share your testimony. You will tell them of the great things that God has done for you. You will share your testimony to your friends, to your neighbors, to your loved ones and your family members. Jesus said to him, go tell your friends how great things the Lord has done for thee and had had compassion on thee. Verse 20. And he departed and began to publish or testify in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Sir, everyone will marvel at your testimony this midst of the year. In the name of Jesus, no one is permitted to enter and exit this midst of the year without a testimony. You are not permitted to enter and exit this midst of the year without a testimony. Today we enter the midst of the year, the first day of the month of June. And the midst of the year comprises of June and July. With June on the first half and July on the second half of the year. Braco Tozuze. Watch out! These two months will bring into your life 
the kind of testimony that will make everyone around you to marvel in amazement. Amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 10. Acts chapter 3, verse 10. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. They knew it was the same person. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him. <laughs> Everyone around you will wonder in amazement at what God will do in your life in this midst of the year. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that is one of the things that we are to expect in the midst of the year season. It is a time of the revival of the works of God in the lives of his people and in the midst of his people. <laughs> they will see God at work in your life this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. People around you will see God at work in you. <laughs> Get what I am saying. I said people around you will see God at work in you. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. The word says, For it is God which walketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. <laughs> it is God which walketh in you. So people around you will see God at work in you. In this midst of the year, in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not start and end this midst of the year as the same person. Amen. This is another dimension, sir. I said you will not start and end this midst of the year as the same person. Amen. A brown new you is emerging from this midst of the year season. Amen. You are emerging from this midst of the year season as another man, as another woman. Not the same you that started it. In 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6, the word says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them. The second part says, and this is my emphasis, Thou shalt be turned into another man. Thou shalt be turned into another man. Sir, it is not the same you starting this piece of the year that will be ending it. It will be, you'll be ending it as a better you. Amen. <laughs> you are ending this midst of the year as a better you, sir. Amen. You are imagined as another man. You are imagined as another woman. The people that used to know you will see a new you. Amen. And they will wonder, is this the same person? No, something has happened, sir. Something has happened in you that has transformed you. You are imagined into... A higher level of glory than your present glory. Amen. Second Corinthians. We all, with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord. Our words are, are change. Sir, God will change you into a better version of you. Meros kelato zaziza. Sir, this you is not the ultimate you. The ultimate you is not this you. There's a better you in this you that the world is waiting for. That's why the Bible said the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The world has not seen the you that will be imagined from these three days fast. My God is changing your life, sir. You are not going to start and end these three days fast as the same person. You are imagining a better version of you. A better version. If you see me some 15 years ago, I'm not this glorious. Some 10 years ago, I am not this glorious. Somebody showed me the picture of when I was posted from Kano to Garden of Faith. I was wearing 54, size 54 suit. My suit size then was size 54. When I was posted from Garden of Faith, Kaduna, to Jahi, my suit size became size 56. When God moved me to Prevailers, it became size 60. <laughs> from glory to glory, he's changing us. So your life will be changed to a higher level of glory. 
to a greater level of glory, to, to a better level of glory. You will not start and end these three days fast as the same person. Thou shalt be turned into another man. Thou shalt be turned into another man. So God is still in the business of changing people. Why? It is God that worketh in you, but to will and to do of his good pleasure. If anyone says that this is your end in life, they have goofed. God has not finished working in you. He's still working in you. The Bible did not say God ended his work, that God rested from his work. That's what the Bible said. He rested. On the seventh day, he rested, not he ended. He rested, sir. And God is still working in our lives, bringing a better version of us by the day. Bringing a better version of us by the day. A version of you that carries more glory. A version of you that carries more beauty. A version of you that carries the hand of God and the anointing of God in a greater dimension. A version of you that will exemplify the blessings of God in a greater dimension. A version of you with greater prosperity. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying, sir? Do you understand what I'm saying, sir? Expect transformation. Change of story. Change of level. In this midst of the year season. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Number two, the midst of the year season is also a season of divine visitation. <laughs> it is a time that God visits his people in the fullness of his power and in the fullness of his glory. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 3. Habakkuk 3 3. Watch this. Sir. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 3. The Bible says, God came from Teman. And the Holy One from Mount Paran. Think about it, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. God came. So the midst of the year season is a season of divine visitation. <laughs> the midst of the year season, sir. So this sixth and seventh month of the year, expect God's visitation in your life. Expect God's visitation in your family. Expect God's visitation in your business. Expect his visitation in your career. The sixth month and the seventh month are months of divine visitation. God visits his people every time. But he visits them specially in the sixth and seventh month. They are months set aside for divine visitation. You will not miss God's visitation this season. We have an example in scriptures. In Luke chapter 1 verse 26. Watch this sir. Luke chapter 1 verse 26. And in the sixth month. In which month sir? A month like this one that we are in. The sixth month of the year. <laughs> it is a year. It is a month of divine visitation sir. The sixth and the seventh month of the year. Are specially set aside for divine visitation. God's visitation to his people. Watch this. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from who, sir? From God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Verse 27. Watch this, sir. The Bible said, And to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Sir, the visitation was packaged to a specific person. Her name was Lebel on the visitation. So you will not miss your visitation this season. It was a customized visitation to Mary. Customized. Is somebody heard what I'm saying? It was a targeted visitation to a specific person. A targeted visitation. Now see what that visitation. You know who came, who brought that visitation? Gabriel. You know who Gabriel is? Verse 19 tells you who Gabriel is. Luke chapter 1 verse 19. He said, and the angel answered and said, I am Gabriel. That does what, sir? That stand in the presence of God. That's who Gabriel is. That's the one that brought the visitation of Mary. <laughs> Gabriel that stand dead in the presence of God, sir. So when Gabriel visits you, it is directly from God. <laughs> is somebody hearing what I'm saying, sir? <laughs> I am Gabriel that standed in the presence of God. Sir, it's not every dig jack and hurry that stands in the presence of God. 
there are very few people that stand in God's presence. <laughs> Even in heaven, sir, presently, Gabriel was one of them. He was the one that brought the visitation of Mary to her. And the sixth month of the year, the angel Gabriel was sent by God. Verse 26, watch this, sir. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So, it was specific. There's no way he would go to Galilee, sir. The assignment was to Nazareth. Are you hearing me, sir? <laughs> sir, your address will be clearly written on this year's visitation. Your, your name and your address will be clearly stated. Now, in verse 28, where we stop, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, see the message he brought. Hail, thou that art highly favored. The visitation of God brought the favor of God into the life of Mary. One visitation, sir. And it changed the course of her life, history, and destiny forever. That visitation changed the course of Mary's life and the course of her destiny and her history forever. <laughs> Is somebody heard what I'm saying? It brought God's favor into her life. Hail thou that art highly favored. <clears throat> the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And see the assurance in Bastati. The angel said unto her, fear not Mary. He was assuring her. For thou hast found favor with God. In this midst of the year, my God will visit you with his favor. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, you will find favor with God and favor with men. I said you will find favor with God and favor with men. You don't need to know somebody before God uses him to bless you. Just know God. You don't need to know somebody before God uses him to bless you. Just know God. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> now, Mary had a testimony from that visitation. See her testimony in verse 46. The testimony of Mary from one divine visitation. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. My spirit rejoiced in God my maker. Verse 47. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Verse 48. For he has regarded the low state of his handmaiden. That was where Mary was when God visited her. That was her status when God visited her. Low estate of his handmaiden. <laughs> Are you hearing me, sir? That was the status of Mary, sir. She was in her status of low estate. Her status of what? Low estate. But watch this, sir. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. But from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. From low estate to the highest state of life. From what, sir? Low estate to the highest state of life. Only God can do that. What a transformation. From henceforth, that visitation changed everything about her life. From henceforth, all generations shall call me not low estate anymore, but shall call me blessed. Why? 49, for he that is mighty has done to me great things. Holy is his name. My father, stretch your hand towards the altar. I decree and declare the visitation of God into your life in this midst of the year season. In the name of Jesus, the visitation of God will change your life for good. It will change your story for good. It will give you a turnaround testimony after the order of Mary. A one-time visitation that will bring a lifetime blessing to your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Please be seated. <laughs> so the midst of the year season is a season of divine visitation. And you are the one that God will look upon for divine visitation this season. I said, you are the one that God will look upon from heaven for a divine visitation this season. Psalms 80 verse 14, Luke 125. 
two scriptures. Psalms 80, verse 14, and then Luke 1, 25. In Psalms 80, verse 14, the word says, Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold, and do what, sir? And visit this vine. You are the one that God will look upon from heaven for a divine visitation. In Luke chapter 1, verse 25, see the testimony of Elizabeth. She said, thus had the Lord dealt with me. In the days wherein he did what, sir? He looked on me. Lift up your voice and say, Father, look on me. In this midst of the year season, for a divine visitation. That's it, sir. Elizabeth said, thus had the Lord dealt with me. In the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men, my father. That visitation to the life of Elizabeth took away her reproach among men. Elizabeth's reproach was the reproach of barrenness. But whatever constitutes a reproach in your life, by God's visitation this midst of the year season, it shall be taken from your life. Yeah. But what is a reproach? A reproach is anything in your life or anything that is not in your life that makes men to question the whereabouts of your God. God. Hear what I'm saying, sir. What is a reproach? A reproach is anything that is in your life or anything that is not in your life that makes men to question the whereabouts of your God. That make men to say, where is your God? That's a reproach. Anything that is in your life or anything that is not in your life that make men to say to you, where is your God? It is an issue of reproach. In Joel chapter 2, verse 17, Joel chapter 2, verse 17, the word says, Let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people. Give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? So anything that makes people say to you, where is your God, is an issue of reproach. And that issue may be anything that is in your life or anything that is not in your life. That makes people to say to you, where is your God? It means anything that you have in your life or that you lack in your life. That is not in your life. Sickness in your life is a reproach. Poverty in your life is a reproach. Lack of money in your life is a reproach. So a reproach is any issue that is in your life or anything that is not in your life that is supposed to be in your life that makes people to question the whereabouts of your God. Get what I am saying, sir? A reproach is anything that is in your life that's not supposed to be in your life or anything that is not in your life that is supposed to be in your life that makes people to question the whereabouts of your God. That thing is a reproach. It ends this time, sir. My God will answer that question, where is your God? By himself. Psalms 50 verse 3. My God will answer that question. <laughs> Because they say to you, where is your God? But see, 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 see how God will answer. Our God shall come. In response to those that are saying to you, where is your God? Our God shall come. And shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him. And it shall be very tempestuous round about him. So for anyone here under the sound of my voice. That is having any issue of reproach in his or her life. For which people have questioned the whereabouts of your God. I prophesy to your life. My God will show up in your favor. To the shame of your mockers. My God will show up in your favor. To the shame of your enemies. In the name of Jesus. This time around my God will answer. He will show up in your favor. To the shame of your enemies. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. In Isaiah chapter 66 verse 5. 
Isaiah 66, verse 5. He said, hear the word of the Lord. You that tremble or respect his word. He said, your brethren that hated you. That cast you out for my name's sake. That said to, that, that cast you out for my, for my name's sake. That said, let the Lord be glorified. Let us see God in your life now. Let God glorify you now. But see the second part, sir. The second part says, but the Lord shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. My God shall appear to your joy and put your enemies to shame and silence their mouth forever. That mouth that they have used to reproach you. That mouth that they have used to mock you. That mouth that, that they have used to say to you, where is your God? My God will appear to your joy and silence their mouth. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> In Psalm, 60, Psalms 86 verse 17. Psalms 86 verse 17. Watch this, sir. He says, show me a token for good. That they which hate me may see it. And be what, sir? And be ashamed. Because thou, Lord, has hope and comforted me. Therefore, before the end of this midst of the year season, my God will give you the kind of testimony that will gladden your supporters and sadden your mockers. Zekapalaros. The kind of testimony that will gladden your supporters and sadden your mockers. Expect it. Number three. The midst of the year season is also a season of mercy. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the year, make known. In wrath, do what, sir? Remember mercy. So the midst of the year season is a time of God's mercy to his people. It is a special season that God shows mercy to his people. So the time has come for God to show you mercy. Amen. Psalms 102 verse 13. What does it mean for God to show you mercy? What does it mean for God to show you mercy? Psalms 102 verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. And we know the time that he does arise. Have you? The midst of the year. So this is the time. This scripture is applicable to the midst of the year season. The time that God shows mercy to his people. He said, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time, what's the time? The midst of the year season. The time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. So the midst of the year season is a season that God shows mercy to his people. What does it mean for God to show mercy to his people? It means to enjoy God's favor. That's what it means, sir. And we all know that God's favor opens doors of blessings and breakthroughs to the favored. God's favor opens doors of blessings and breakthroughs to the favored. How do I know? Isaiah chapter 60, verses 10 and 11, and then we pray. Isaiah 60, 10 and 11. He said, the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. The sons of who, sir? Who is a stranger? Somebody that you don't know. Sir, you don't need to know somebody before God uses him to bless you. The sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. They are kings shall minister unto thee. Why? Because in my rod I smote thee. Remember I say in rod, remember mercy. In my rod I smote thee. But in my favor have I had what's a mercy on thee. God's mercy is synonymous to God's favor and it opens doors of blessings and breakthroughs. Look at it, verse 11, sir. Therefore, as a result of that mercy, thy gates shall be open for how long, sir? Continually. I usher you into your season of unending blessings and breakthroughs. Because your gates shall be open not, not, not seasonally, not occasionally, but continually. 
So it is a season of unending blessings. Season of unending breakthroughs. He said, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. That men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles. And that their kings may be brought. Sir, from the door that God will open unto you. People that will minister unto you will come to you. And they will not come empty. They will come with plenty. The wealth of the, they will come with the wealth of the Gentiles. I'm going to stop here because of time. Because we need to pray. But number four. <laughs> the midst of the year season is a season of empowerment. Habakkuk 3, 4. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4. He said, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand. And there was, the words are, the hiding of his power. So the midst of the year season is a season where God reveals and releases his power to his people. It is a time that God reveals. His power is always hidden. There was the hiding of his power. So it is a time that God reveals and releases his power to his people. So it is a season of empowerment. And sir, listen, if you are not empowered, you will be overpowered. Stand on your feet. Power makes the difference between those who prevail in life and those who travel in life. You will not end this midst of the year season at the same level of power you started it with. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have two prayer points very quickly. Studio, put up the prayer point. So with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, by your favor, open unto me new doors of opportunities for next level prosperity in my life. Let this miss of the year season mark the beginning of unending blessings and breakthroughs in my life. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Please, don't pray psychedelically. Pray passionately. Father, in the name of Jesus, by your favor, open unto me new doors of opportunities for next level prosperity in my life. You said my gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shot by day. They shall not be shot by night. My father, by your favor, open unto me new doors of opportunities for next level prosperity in my life. Let this miss of the year usher me into seasons of unending blessings and breakthroughs in my life. Let this miss of the year mark the beginning of unending blessing and breakthrough in my life. Zekara Gabalato, Zagaga, Zagaga, Rakoto Pekete. New doors of opportunities for next level prosperity. Open them unto me by your favor. In this midst of the year, in this midst of the year, my father, I give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' precious name. Stretch your hand towards the altar. I decree and declare by the authority that is vested me in the name of Jesus. In this midst of the year season, Father, open to everyone under the sound of my voice, on sight and online, new doors of opportunities for next level prosperity. In the name of Jesus, usher everyone under the sound of my voice into their season of unending blessings and breakthroughs. Let their doors of blessings be open continually. They shall not be shut by day. They shall not be shut by night. In the name of Jesus, people you know and people you don't know shall bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles. From the door of favor that God will open unto you, the people that will bless you will come to you. They will come loaded. They will not come empty. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Thank you for watching. For further inquiries, please call 0806 350 4122 or 0806 922 
0809-242-6967. You can join us live on Facebook at Kingdom Prevailers International Christian Center or our YouTube channel at Kingdom Prevailers International Christian Center. God bless you.